Hey, thanks for stopping by. This will be part two in Royal Marine Commando training. Let's get going. I'm house. There are no friendlies being sighted on that location. If you see them, you know they're enemy. Clear? Back in time for team medals. You're going to be key. You're going to be my eyes. Recruits Morrissey will... So you got the guy who's been in 22 years briefing these guys, which is good stuff, right? Um, he's about to get out from the first one, if you haven't seen it. 22 years, I believe, in 84, 85, all the way through this program. That's the kind of leadership you want in these kind of exercises, so you really learn something. Not from a junior guy who's been in eight years, but 20-plus year guy who's been through it. Leading his section on the assault. Roger. Not, huh? We always said that like fine legs is definitely one of the major last hurdles. You want your fine legs to be hard. Okay. There's some older nods that they're using. This video dated a little bit, but those seem pretty old even for this time. The sort of group position is a little bit more exposed than I would have liked, but it's not a problem. And Morrissey, you will walk us in as bold as brass. Okay, onto that assault okay. line. Okay, start moving forward now. Yeah, okay. Assault is starting now. That's the first team's moving forward. Unleash hell. Clear. So you figure this is the last exercise these guys are doing. So they're pretty. It's pretty intense watching this kind of stuff. And being in it in, at nighttime, everything's dark. You probably don't have your nods on at this point, or maybe you do. And all of a sudden, you see muzzle flashes coming out of the building. Definitely wake you up. You happy with that fucking security there? Okay. Good, you've got the whole corner. Get it, 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 get so it looks like they already got a casualty, right? I don't know how they're determining this, if it's Miles Gear or some kind of new um, simulation kind of thing, but uh, looks like good stuff. Let's keep going. You could die, and you, I just, I never really think about that. And when I speak to a lot of my other lads and Marines, they're like, yeah, I don't really think about that either. It just doesn't play in your mind. It genuinely doesn't. Play. Yeah, it doesn't play in your mind when you're a young stud and you're going to die. And that's how they get guys to run towards machine guns. Uh, if you thought you were going to die, you probably wouldn't do it. In your mind, I don't think about stuff like that particularly. I know I probably should and I probably will when I know that it is going to happen. It's not because I don't want to think about it. I just don't think about it because it isn't happening imminently right now. I'm sure as soon as my first mate goes on ops, I'm going to be jealous. I'm not going to be thinking, oh... I remember having any reflection that this well thought out, like this guy's really thought through what he's gonna say for the cameras. I hope he gets back safe, I'm gonna be like, oh, I'm fucking well jealous of what he's doing right now. No time's enemy dead round the corner. Yeah, everybody wants to test their metal, right? You don't wanna go through all this training like this guy is and find out, or never find out, um, what you're like under fire. You know, it's a tough situation, but you always wanna know, right? Could you hack it? One time's enemy dead here. Okay. Yeah, I do worry about him. Yeah, I do. Um, none of that is hidden. A gnarly feet. You can't do these exercises, be told that you were shot as a casualty, and not reflect. Yeah, most of these young guys, like the last one there, he's not thinking about it. You know, they're young studs, they're running towards the fire. They don't think they're going to get hurt. Superman. Ones. I do worry about them. yeah. Any of you guys have those British MREs? Put it in the comments below. I wonder if they're the same as US MREs as far as the taste and what they throw in the pack. I'm sure that you guys get some different items we don't have, so put that in the comments. Loads to do tonight, lads. I'm sure you can appreciate. Harnesses need to be squared away tonight. All extra weapons, all spare weapons, everything cleaned. Oh, this part sucks, right? They're coming in after the exercise and have to clean all their gear. You're tired, you just want to hit the rack. Mm, not so fast. Understand? The diamonds have all passed the final exercise. 
Alright, so the square and the gear away. A big yeah. mess. Board. It's 6.30 a.m. and 169's training team have arrived to inspect the dorms. Fucking fuming. I'm absolutely fucking fuming. 169 on the landing! I don't know how they let it get this much of a disaster to begin with. Usually expected to be a little more squared away. At least not piles of trash and pizza boxes, right? Pretty bad. Everybody get on your fucking arms now. Push. Where are the fucking harnesses that are meant to be cleaned and up top? Why does this end of the corridor look like a fucking shit state? Basically everything that I said to you to do last night, you right, fucking yeah. mugged me off on. You know, it's a big deal if you lose gear, right? Even web gear in this case looks like any kind of nods or weapons is a no-go. You can't lose any of that. But it's a big deal to get that stuff back to supply. And these guys, like the sergeants, responsible for it. Um, I'm sure it's there somewhere, but it's probably unsat in a mess. Has that been cleaned? Is it, Jen? It, it has been cleaned, Jen. That's, that's fucking Jen been cleaned. <laughs> Why is there shit all over it? Why is it covered in green paint as well? Who did that? Uh, I sprayed it green because... You sprayed it green. They're fucking entrenching tools rather than clean them! Don't you ever... You'll see people come up with wild ideas of how to get their gear ready to go back. And I'll give you an example. Let's say you're finishing up and you're giving your weapons back. And you're cleaning them at the armory. So in the US, you get the armory here and the big fence around it tables to clean. And you'll have guys that are bringing in carb cleaner, brake cleaner trying to clean that weapon faster you're not supposed to do that but you know when you've got a platoon full of guys cleaning weapons it's late you want to get rid of those damn things you'll do whatever you can to clean it so this in this case it's a clean <laughs> the e tool he's spraying it green it seems like a pretty dumb move take it upon yourselves to repaint military kit <laughs> i'm walking out the accommodation i've got nods coming back towards me from the fucking nappy so you got time to get a fucking pocket of crisps down here, but you ain't got fucking time to clean a roll mat. Man, it's ridiculous. I know yeah, I last night you were up against it. What do you think when you pass out of here, you'll never ever be up against it again in your careers? The core is at its best when we're up against it. It's when our character really shines. And that's across the board, whether it be across the Atlantic and the England in this case, or be in America, you know, the, the Marine Corps does shine when it's at its worst, you know, when you're getting tested. You have less time to get into trouble, less time to deal with problem cases, less time you're dealing with, you know, personal cases at home with the guys. They're just out there humping the gear, right? When it's just normal day-to-day -day routine, we probably don't look much different from fucking any army unit. We really don't. But it's when others decide to fucking stop or oh, it's too hard. That is when we're like that, big grins in our faces. Let's go for it. Explosion. Calm, 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 calm. That, that, that's me. But that's because I'm passionate about my job and I have a lot of pride in my job, as do all the lads on the team. He is right there. Yeah. Yeah, and sometimes the Marines underneath them, underneath you, got to, they got to get into it, you know. Got to get into them and let them know it's unacceptable. He's totally right. Plus, look at what we're dealing with, the business we're in. We, we are at the sharp end of the armed forces. And again, it's not blowing smoke over our backsides, we are. You know, he was right, those little things, cleaning a weapon, cleaning gear, are equally as important as doing some right on a mission because all those attention to detail items will come to bear. And if you're an S show doing the basic stuff, how are you going to do the big stuff right? 45 year old Ginge Booth is in his last two weeks of 28 years of service. Wow, 28 years. That's wrong. I know it will be a life change. For a start, I'm going to be home an awful lot more. Sorry, missus. <laughs> into tree surgery and landscaping oh. <laughs> tree surgery hey you guys from England and uh, let me know is tree surgery landscaping that'd be a tough transition right going from being a uh, 28 years in the Marines to uh, now being a landscaper I think while there's enough fuel in the tank I want to do something for me Oh, that's some great news. One recruit, 23-year-old Sam Davis, has recently transferred to the troop after being injured for five months. 
Wow, so you figure he got held back for five months. Now he's getting rolled in. I think it was already six months, and I was into it for 11 months, right? Put in the comments below if you guys ever got rolled for that duration, or got rolled at all, med rolled. Knee infection, so I spent my time getting rehabbed. He's already caught the eye of the training team. Your performance last few exercises has impressed. You're definitely worthy of a diamond. That's right. Okay, obviously there's a lot of responsibility in touch. That's right. Yeah, do you understand? I'm in a diamond. So he's coming in, you know, as a squad leader, guy, and diamond is what they call it. But he's coming in as the top, one of the top guys in the class, getting rolled in. He must have been really an outstanding guy. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a, you've done all right, kind of moment. So I was wow. obviously proud. So, good effort there, Davis. Thanks, sir. Okay. Davis will now join the three other diamonds as a candidate for the highest honor a recruit can achieve at Limpston, the King's Badge. Although not always given out, if the diamonds are considered worthy, it is awarded in the final week of training to the best one. There's four from this troop in the running. Actually, there's four diamonds, and there's only going to be one, right? So it gets really competitive. I'm not sure how they gauge them. You have four guys taking different leadership roles. Hey, any of you guys put in the comments below who understand this diamond, uh, how it works, how they end up gauging, you know, who is the best diamond. It's awarded to the recruit who's done best. It's an honor that you will take around the core and through the rest of your career for the rest wow. of your life. There will be a panel and that panel will ask questions on core history, military knowledge, or everything is taken into account. So it looks like a board, like we have them in the Marine Corps, you know, meritorious boards, whatever, they're going to get in front of them and no history, which is a big deal in both Marine Corps, obviously, and, you know, effectiveness of weapons, tactics, maybe ask you about some of the stuff in your, your jacket. Any of the Diamonds got any questions about the King's Badge? Hmm. Oh, there you go. James Secker. James Secker. What did he say? <laughs> this production company does show the worst, you know, the locker room stuff and make them just look silly. They have done for me at last. Yes. The King's Badge one's a big honour to get that. It's... Which will be taken into account. Morrissey, he belongs to you, Guffers, doesn't he? Morrissey's been strong from the start. He's able to think at a level that you want to say. <laughs> He's the thinking man of the bunch, right? He didn't want to be there, didn't know why he was there, I should say. He's a good guy. He's one of the head head dudes. Back to the nod tactically. Well, I bet they pick Morrissey or fucking Davies because I posh tough. Cheers. So you both just went and slated me and Davies for absolutely no reason. <laughs> uh, there was a clear. All right, and Court Ruddard asked me a question. He went, "What are these?" The next one I want to speak about was Callahan. I like his moral courage. He's shown commando qualities. Yeah. You know, in abundance, but he's not the most academic lad, and he maybe lacks that sort of foresight. Then. So you see in the unit. Like this, right? Kicking indoors and direct action stuff. He just said he's not the most academic lad. So it does make a difference. You know your knowledge, right? Whether you're going into Marine Commandos, Royal Marine Commandos, or U.S. Marines, that knowledge element is important. It's not hard. You don't have to be a genius to figure it out, but you have to study up on it and uh, pay attention. Maybe Morrissey has. I think I should get it because you two have both got degrees. You've got an unfair advantage. You're a big boy, Callahan. You we don't tend to question big boys. Ends up somewhere in between the two lads. So it's a pretty Andrew detailed Davis. board. What I will say, Bill Farr really listening on that radio, but it was impressive. It, it was genuinely impressive. That could have been train right all the way up to sergeant. He was on fire with his last troop. Yeah. So he's a late entry in the race, if you like. Hey, if you guys like this installment, please put part three in the comment section below. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.